Could you be affecting your accuracy by loading your bipod on your 22? Find out next. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical and today I wanted to shoot a really quick video and talk to you guys about something I mentioned uh, when we did our after action report of the National Rifle League 22 matches and also something we talked about on our Mail Call Mondays episode. Uh, when I was shooting the last NRL 22 match, I noticed something very strange with my rifle. Uh, now I went into this match uh, expecting to shoot it like I would normally shoot a center fire uh, precision rifle style match. Uh, and when I do that, usually when I have a chance to, I drive the rifle hard. I use my body weight and my body mass uh, to control the recoil of the rifle. Now obviously when we we're talking about 22s, there's almost no recoil whatsoever here. Uh, I could trigger the rifle without anything behind the buttstock and it's going to move very little just because of the mass of the overall rifle uh, compared to the recoil of the 22 LR cartridge. Uh, however, I still wanted to be able to shoot these guns the way I shoot a center fire rifle so that I'm not uh, free recoiling the 22s but then loading these center fires hard because you may get some situations where um, you're practicing one thing and then doing something else uh, at a match. So I wanted to be able to shoot these things the same way. Well when I was at the match, the Prior to the match actually starting, we got a chance to verify our dope, verify our scope settings at each range, and I verified at 25, I was zeroed at 50, verified at 75 and 100, so everything was dead on, uh, but then our first string of fire, uh, I got on it, I was shooting from prone, and I was missing the targets, missing rather meaty targets that I should not have missed, and I wasn't quite sure why, until it dawned on me that I was laying prone and I was laying on a shooting mat that had a strap across the front of it that you could hook your bipod feet into. I did have the bipod feet hooked into it and so I have my body weight resting on the butt stock on the Bell and Carlson stock that I had. So I'm, I've got 180 pounds resting against the butt stock and I've got the bipod on the front of here, and while this is a very rigid stock, uh, that's still quite a bit of weight on this stock. And what I had figured was happening was the bipod was acting as a lever, and it was forcing the foreend of the rifle down, or the foreend of the stock down. On the Bell & Carlson stock here, there is a barrel pad right up here at the top of the stock, or at the end of the foreend. So when the action is bolted in here, the barrel is actually resting on this pad and the pad is providing a little bit of upward pressure on that barrel to help support the barrel. Now on rimfire rifles, sometimes it is very beneficial uh, to have the barrel supported. You can use that as a tuning device depending upon uh, how much pressure you put up there. Uh, but they don't need to vibrate freely uh, like centerfire rifles generally do. Uh, so you can get incredible accuracy even with the barrel not being free floated. However, usually when you're shooting like that, you're shooting from a sandbag rest or a forend rest or some kind of machine rest. Uh, you're not shooting from a bipod that has the ability to pull that stock down. So that dawned on me about halfway through the stage and I came back off of the stock so that the bipod was sitting on the ground instead of being forced backwards. And then I started to hit my targets. I also had noticed during the string that my misses were about a half a mil low. Uh, so it put some questions in my head. I went through the rest of the match and I shot uh, without loading the bipod, just letting the bipod sit there. And I was getting good hits. I, I cleaned some stages. I did fairly decent on some other stages. Uh, but I wanted to come back and actually test that. Uh, so yesterday I went out to the range and I shot with the Bell and Carlson stock in, so the rifle set up exactly the way it was uh, when I shot the NRL match. And I shot it uh, with the bipod just resting on the shooting mat. And then I shot a second string immediately afterwards. I took a uh, lath strip that we usually staple targets to, and I put it behind two of the concrete target benches. Uh, so I could put the bipod feet against the bottom of that wood strip and then really drive the bipod hard 
into that strip. So really get it staked in there and be able to get consistent pressure from shot to shot. And when I fired the next string, I noticed that I was half a mil low. Uh, a, a little bit less accuracy than the the rest, uh, the uh, group with the rifle just resting on the ground, uh, but still very close to the same group size, just half a mil low. Uh, so that tells me I more than likely am actually pulling down on the barrel. So uh, that answered that question, but not consent to stop there. I went ahead and switched the stock over to a Victor Company USA Titan 1022 stock. Uh, and this stock does fully free float the barrel. Uh, so I can take this piece of paper here and wrap it underneath the barrel and slide it back. And you can see that the barrel is not actually contacting uh, anywhere on the stock. So that's a true free float like we would see with center fire stocks. So I took this out, I got zeroed up, and I performed the exact same test. Now, first of all, I will tell you that when I zeroed up, I was uh, the first shot just switching the rifle over. The windage was perfect, but I was actually uh, impacting two mils low uh, at 50 yards. So two mils low at 50 yards tells me that this was actually definitely pushing up on the barrel. Uh, so we got it dialed in. I shot a group. I was uh, centered up on that group. And then again, I performed the driving the bipod setup uh, like I had previously and had no change on the point of impact. Uh, so with the Titan 1022 stock, I can drive this bipod like I can with a center fire rifle and not affect my point of impact at all. Uh, so that was a really nice thing to see. Now, I really do like the Bell & Carlson stock. Uh, it feels good. It worked well. We put the Victor Company cheek riser on it, uh, and I like the feel of the stock. But the Titan 1022 definitely works better for NRL 22 style shooting where I'm going to have force put on the forend and I don't want that force transferred through to the barrel. Uh, as we go forward, uh, there are going to be varying different barricades and varying different things where I'm going to want to be able to sit this against a barricade and really drive the rifle. Uh, so for those kind of setups, I want a totally free-floated forend, and I think this is going to do it for us. Now, we will do a full review of the Titan 1022 coming up here very soon. I've been shooting this stock uh, for a while. I like the vertical grip. I like the way it fills my hand. I like the way that I have a ramp back here that I can put my thumb on to anchor my trigger finger. And with the addition of the Victor Company cheek riser, this is an additional accessory. It doesn't come with the stock. Uh, it puts my face in line with the scope right where I need it to be. Uh, so overall, it's a really nice setup. We've got flush cups on here so I can attach the slings that I use on my center fire rifles uh, without having to go to anything else. And I will probably put a pick rail on the front here. It's already threaded for it uh, so that I can put my Atlas bipod on uh, when I go out to shoot it. So overall, I think for my purpose, the Titan 1022 is going to be a better option than the Bell & Carlson stock. Although uh, maybe later this year we may go through and try to grind out that barrel pad and see if uh, with a fully free-floated uh, forend uh, if we have any of those problems again. Uh, so that's just a real quick down and dirty on what I found out and give you guys an idea of what you might want to look for when you're looking for a stock for a 1022 if you're intending on shooting it in NRL 22 competitions or these kind of uh, precision rifle type setups uh, with the 1022. So that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, get out and shoot.